Honestly, there's not a whole lot I remember about my birth parents. I was really, really young. There was one night that me and all my siblings, we did this thing where we all slept in my parents' room. We did like sleepovers and we all woke up the next morning, but my mom didn't. And I was in the bed next to her and I just remember everyone freaking out. So the Bryans are a family that ended up coming over and started taking care of me and my brother and my sister. They talked to my dad and he had put them in the will. And about two weeks after we officially moved in with them, my dad passed away from cancer. Moving in with the Bryans was such a like culture shock because they were a loving family and they cared about each other and they had meals together and like they were always involved. And that was just something that I had never felt before or like even really seen before. It almost made me feel worse about myself and about my family and about my past and my childhood than what I had in front of me. And it was a lot of looking on the past and feeding lies into my head of like, I'm not worth that, I don't deserve that. I had extreme trust issues and abandonment issues. I mean, I had just lost my parents. And so all of that was, was hard. And so there was a lot of making myself believe that it's false, that what I have is not real, that they don't actually love and care about me. They don't actually want me there and I'm a burden to them. I, I felt a lot of pressure on myself because I was put into a place that I wasn't supposed to be in a normal life story. In a lot of ways, I felt like God wasn't the same God to me that he was to everyone else. I believed that he didn't really care about me, that I was never going to be redeemed or have that redemption story that you hear about in church every weekend. I had no self-esteem. I hated looking in the mirror at myself, even at a very young age. I, I just, I hated the way I looked. I hated the way I sound. I, I felt like all of the people who were around me just wanted to be around me because I was a charity. I was a project. I was the orphan. It was self-destructive in my own journey and in my own health and in my relationships around me. It was such a battle to get up and do anything. And I was able to mask it pretty well, so no one really knew. I started becoming suicidal and I started self-harming because I, I didn't want to be here. I felt like I shouldn't be feeling those things. I shouldn't be sad and I shouldn't be dealing with this. I should be happy because I do have people around me. I didn't want everyone to think that their effort to pour into me and to make me feel loved was kind of going to waste. It was sophomore year. We went to the sermon, went to worship, and then as we normally did, we skipped groups. This time was different because Tia DeVries caught us skipping groups. And so she got us into a group. Uh, we were absolutely terrified our first day, but we walked in and instantly we felt like we belonged there. A few weeks after joining the group, we went to high school camp and I was absolutely terrified going with a group that I barely knew. I was with them for probably two weeks before summer break had started, but being there at camp with these people was such a life-changing moment where they were intentional and they wanted to be around me and they wanted to get to know me. The third night of camp, Matt Reagan was preaching and he said, and I will never forget it, he said, what are you waiting for? The door is right in front of you. It's open, walk through it. And I said, oh yeah, he's talking to me. That was the moment that really everything changed knowing that I do have people who really do love me and who do care about me. And they are going to be by my side and holding my hand as I walk through my Christian journey as well. I remember the day after I walked through the door, I was talking to John Lindsay, uh, who ended up baptizing me the next day. Um, and he had told me, he said, this moment is life changing. And this is you saying that my identity is not in anything else but God alone. There are moments when I doubt it and moments that I don't believe it. I can stand firm in that nothing defines me but God and no one defines me. And no matter what anyone says or what I say to myself, it doesn't matter. 
because what God says about me is what's really true. Over and over again, God is finding his ways to tell me that I'm a beloved daughter, that I'm his, I'm loved, and I'm clean.